What's up everybody, it's Josh back with another tech profile from YCS London, 250th YCS. I got top 32, lost to Mathmic <laughs> out of all decks, uh, unfortunately, but I played Life Twin Runic Sprite and I think the deck is, is really, really good. Before we get into the deck profile though, I want to give a shout out to some people, um, mostly uh, Daniel, Nico and uh, Tio and Ben, who basically are the creators of this deck. I did not make this deck on my own. I, like you all know, I played Labyrinth last weekend. I didn't know what to bring. I was very, uh, you know, desperate for what deck to bring. And they, they like, throughout the week, they were like, yeah, we think this is a good deck. And I was like, okay, let's work on it together. And I do think it was the best deck of the format. Uh, I think it was a very good solution to the format. I'll show you what the end board and what the goal is and why I think it's good, but I'll just show you the deck first. So we played something that's very unusual for Life Twin Sprite Runic, which is we played a very big Life Twin package. Three uh, Lila, three Kisikil, one Frost, and one Sunny Snitch even. Normally you see smaller packages of these, but these are really the key reason why this deck functions, is if you draw a Life Twin, all of your hands are so hard to stop. It's very, very key to draw a Life Twin, and we figured it would be better to draw two than to draw none, so we went higher on the number. I will say I drew multiples of these very often, and sometimes it did hurt me, especially when it was like three of them. But I still think it's a it's a very fine decision to play many uh, twins. I played three blues, two jets, one red, one carrot, and one starter. That's all the sprite cards. The sprite cards are really here only for the first turn. After the first turn, they don't really offer you that much because without elf, there's not that much recursion. Like the grind game in this deck comes from the life twins and you do not want to be starter locked after turn one, and you also don't want to open starter out of these, you rather open one of these, because this is more bodies, right? One of these is, is three bodies, whereas this is only two bodies, because you go blue into jet into nothing. Even if you play smashers, it's only two bodies. So uh, this is it. Um, the only thing that's like bad about this is if you do draw starter, you, you don't have a target for jet, but you can still go starter into blue into carrot or red, so it's still fine. So yeah, I would not change this. I would have not changed this going back. I think this was absolutely fine. Uh, and now for the best part, the runics. I tried to fit as many as possible, but it's not quite as many as I would like. It's three tips, three flashing fire, three destruction, three freezing curses, three slumber, and only one dispelling, so it's only 16 quick play spells. I wish I could could have fit one more, but like I said, we really wanted to have many twins. This is why this deck I think is better than other runic decks this format, is because your secondary engines, as opposed to like Naturia, actually do something into a Ryzard, right? You want to open like one or two runics, and one or two of these guys, and you can play just fine under a Ryzard, it's actually no problem. And so the more runics you play, the more consistent your deck's deck gets with the runic grind game, but you, you lose viability into a Ryzard, right? Like you can, if you don't draw a twin, your hand is so much worse into a Ryzard, you know? Also, the reason why we only played one of this and we maxed out on the pink one, because technically the pink one is worse than the blue one. So you could play more of this to have more copies of the of the pink one instead, but that's worse against Droll and Lockbird, it's worse against Naturia Beast, and that's that. And that left us with exactly six slots for non-engine. And the six slots for non-engine, I did two Kurikaras, one Talents, and three Evenly. So this, this might look weird, but I, I figured Evenly was the best one, simply because if you go first, you just discard it, and if you go second, I think it's the best card in the format, and this card performed really well. Um, the reason why it's only two Kurikara and not three is because I didn't want more than five cards that are not good when I go first, ever. And um, this is why I decided to make my, my sixth non-engine a, a Talents, because that card, at least when I go first, uh, it helps me play through hand traps, right? Because most of the hands are really, really fine into, into hand traps, but if you draw two of these when you go first, you can usually still play, but your hand is now very weak to hand traps, and that's why I didn't want to go six, and instead just go one Talents. And like one Talents, I felt like there was really no reason not to play it. It was only dead in my hand like once or twice every other time you can use it. I would have used more if there was more room for it, but I didn't want to go over 40. But since I didn't want six going second cards, I added the talents because it's also fine going first. And Kurikara is the second best after Evenly. I like that it's good against the full zone lock, but also against just a Ryzard. And it's actually surprisingly strong against Sprite because the, the pure Sprite was very popular and the deck just doesn't have follow-up. So you can just play into their board, bait their negates, and just tribute the, their stuff with Kurikara, and they just don't beat that. It's really uh, nice. So those were, those were good. I'll show you the extra deck before I'll show you like the basic combo. So uh, two Hugin, one Gary. I did cut the Hugin last minute, the third one, and I don't regret doing it. I, don't mi I didn't miss it a single time. That was fine. It felt weird only doing two Hugins, but it was fine, I think. Uh, and then one Gigantic is the only XYZ. Like I said, we don't really play much of, of Sprite after turn one, and this is where the XYZs would usually come up. After turn one, we're really trying to play Lynx with the Life Twins. 
Uh, we don't want to get locked, and so we don't really need any other than the one gigantic on turn one. You don't even need it in the standard combo, I'll show you. Two of each twin, one sprint. You pretty much only summon this to get to your twins. If you don't draw a twin, there's combos where you go sprint into one twin, gigantic out the other, uh, which I did very rarely because I played the big twin package, but you can do it. Uh, Muckraker is really good for follow-up because even if they clear all of your twins, you can summon Muckraker and bring back whichever and you don't need to draw another twin for that. IP is part of our end board. Uh, Unicorn uh, as another target for IP. It's a fiend so you can summon it on turn two after using these. Uh, I summoned this a lot. This is the card I added for the third Hugin and this came up a lot. Uh, Griffin is your go-to end board uh, with IP. I'll show you in a second. One abomination for the grind game which is really nice, and then this thing, which is just a monster on follow-up. Like, this, this this thing alone is like so much follow-up if they don't kill your entire board. This is where the grind game comes in after turn one. This is why you only want one starter, because you can go into, into these powerhouses as well as Unicorn, just, yeah. Okay, before we do decide, quickly, I want to showcase the, the end board or the combo that we're trying to go for. So, the, the cool thing about this deck you don't actually need to draw all of your engines because all you need to do is get to a twin and have five monsters on the board. And there's different ways you can do it, but you don't need to draw twin, sprite, and runic. Like you can do it with, with runics and, and sprites. You can do it with twin plus sprite. You can do it with twin plus runics. It doesn't matter. Every additional card you have next to your two to three card combos is just a way to break through hand traps very easily. But for example, let me, let's just move all the runics to the side. If we just draw a twin and a blue, what we do, you, you summon Lila, summon Kiss to Kill, summon Blue, grab Jet, then you would go Gigantic. And here the cool thing is that you don't actually care if you resolve Gigantic, you don't need it. You already have everything you need, you don't need to summon all of this. So this is just Valor, Imperm, Ash, Bait. If they, if they hand trap this, it's actually just good for you because you literally don't care. If this resolves, uh, I usually just get out another twin just so I don't draw into it later. Like, this, this, you don't need this. You just do this to play around Nibiru and to bait Valor, Imperm, Ash. And this got hand trapped a lot today, so this was nice. And then you go for this, grab starter. And then all you need to do, this is why I'm saying five monsters, because it's four plus the one. All you need to do is summon IP, and then you'll go for the twin combo under IP, and use starter to carry it here. And then Kissy Kill revives Lila, Lila and Kissy Kill go into Lila, and that will go here, and this goes here. And so this draws you a card. And this is your end board, and what you do on your opponent's turn is you go IP into, into Griffin Rider. You can use the effect of Griffin Rider to reset starter if you have like an evenly in your hand just to set it and recycle it. And then on the next turn you can decide whether you want to use it or not. But the Griffin is really hard to beat for all the decks in the format because they don't have any link zones. So like you can't use any of your sprite effects, you can't use Kashtira effects, you can't use any branded fusion effects. Like it's, the Griffin is really powerful. The Griffin alone is probably already game most of the time. But on top of that you have the Frost Draw. Uh, you get Kissy Kill into Lila here, and Lila can pop because it points to Carrot, so it's linked. So you can pop with Kissy Kill, draw with Kissy Kill Frost. Carrot will then tribute the this one to negate a spell trap, and then you can use this one to bring this back and draw an another card. If you have an extra runic on turn one, you get Fountain. You can convert any draws into incredible pluses. If you have another runic body, you can just gigantic for a red uh, on top of all of this. So it's really nice and the follow-up of this board is crazy. Even if they out one or both of these, which they probably cannot realistically, but even if they do, like the, the, the life twin follow-up is just insane because you can like do these two again, make uh, make the, uh, the Trouble Sunny. Trouble Sunny brings these two back. You pop and draw and then you turn these two into Abomination. End phase pop. It's, it's like if you've ever played Life Twin, you know how sick the grind game can get. And like I said, we haven't even added any runics to the mix yet. So the combos, if you play, if you draw the the runics, are pretty straightforward. You just try to do the same thing. If you are missing a sprite, you're gonna gigantic for the sprite. If you're missing a runic, you're gonna do the sprint plus uh, gigantic for the for the twins, and just draw a bunch of cards with runics, and it's it's pretty sick. Yeah. And then uh, for the side deck. 
five bestials. My mentality on bestials was just, I'm gonna build my side deck, what I need for the other matchups, and then I'm gonna try and fit as many bestials as possible. That number was five. I wish I could have played more even, just because it covers Despia and Mathmech really well. And that's that, that's really nice. Uh, and then I played, I played two nibs. The reason for that was I wanted to have a mix of answers to Cash Tira after siding that was like flexible in terms of the playstyle because it's like some people just go a rise hard pass where these two are really strong some people don't do that though and i feel like against a deck like this one i feel like people would be inclined to go for the full combo and that's why i wanted to play some amount of nibirus um and it, i think it's just the best approach to cash is just to have a have a healthy mix of of answers rather than putting all eggs into one basket and that is why i still did play the nibiru in this deck the thing with nibiru is also in this deck i had it a couple times where People played around it, I had it, and it was dead in my hand. But as a, like, it's just a matter of fact that this deck can play through a Rise Heart. It's not that hard. Like the Twins are really good into a Rise Heart, the Sprites are really good into a Rise Heart. You have outs with your Runic Engine to a Rise Heart. So I won a bunch of games where they didn't commit into Nibiru, even though I had a dead card in my hand, because you were just like, okay, pitch it for a Runic to grab Fountain after you outed the, the thing, it's, it's fine. So this was, I think, a good decision. This little guy only came up like once or twice but it has to be there. Chaos Hunter and Mannequin Cat is really, really good because this is also another reason why I like this deck. It's because it's the only Runic deck that doesn't lose to Shifter because all what you do is the same thing I did in Utrecht. It's just like, make this, uh, bring, give them the Shifter, bring out the Chaos Hunter, all of it in defense, which is good against Kashira in multiple ways because they're under Chaos Hunter, so they can banish. You've disabled their Shifter. They only have four cards left in hand and draw for, uh, into five. And they have a shifter on board that they cannot crash because you can summon everything in defense and your life twins are 1100 attack which is smaller than shifter so they can't even crash uh the shifter so this is just one another bonus thing is that you just don't lose to it you don't lose to shifter with this deck whereas every other runic version does lose to shifter so that's nice cold by the grave mainly for math mech maybe some other matchups when you go first like hand trap heavy matchups this is fine uh, the Smashers, like I said, I did not miss it in the main deck, but there's a couple of matchups where you do want it, like the Runic Mirror matches or anything that can summon Dragoon. And then I played three Grave of the Super Ancient Organism because I felt like it was the very best card against branded decks, going first and second, because if you if you get Puppet Locked, you can just set this and still win. I, I figured that was nice. Uh, and if they had Cosmic for it, that would mean they cannot Cosmic their Runic Fountain. So I think that's fine. Did not activate this card a single time all tournament. So that's the list. I think it's really sick. I think I think it's it ended up being a really, really good deck. I was really hoping to to take it a little bit further, but Mathmic, uh, you know, lost the dice roll. Game three, got anti-spelled, plus, plus comboed. Uh, it was actually still close because I had a bestial, but the, the anti-spell was just a little bit too much. Anyways, it's fine. He was a nice guy. Yeah, that's the deck profile, 250s YTS. Shout out, shout out to all the people that uh, cheered for me and special shout out to uh, everyone that worked on the deck with me, like I said earlier. And uh, yeah, shout outs to my fiance at home, my family at home, everyone watching. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content and uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next stream. Bye-bye.